I'm watching the announcement of the 2008 Nobel Prize in Chemistry. No. Hello? Yeah. Yes. I'm just watching it. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Bye. The, the, the area of, um, the, for which this has been awarded is in the area of biochemistry that's on the <coughs> borders of chemistry and biology. And, but this year's prize is quite interesting. It's for the so-called green fluorescent protein. Now, probably some of you know that when molecules have energy in them, they can emit light. S some of you may have seen light sticks like this, which if you sh um, break them, the chemical reaction starts and it gives out light. You can also get the emission of light by molecules um, if they absorb ultraviolet light and um, <clears throat> then they absorb ultraviolet light which is of high energy and some of this energy is lost as heat and then the molecules give out visible light which you can see. Some of you, at least the younger people watching the, these videos, may have seen if you go into a club quite often it's really quite dark but then bits of your clothes suddenly <clears throat> give out bright light because this is the because the club is illuminated by ultraviolet light that you can't see and the molecules absorb this light and some of it turns to heat and out comes the visible light. How do you know about that? Um, what the clubs? Yeah. Because well I was young once too and people the clubs have had these lights for a long time and um, it's particularly embarrassing as some of you will know because dandruff the human um, flesh that comes out of your hair can fluoresce so that you can go in wearing dark clothes and suddenly all your dandruff fluoresces. Now what the prize was given for was that Japanese scientist Simanura discovered <coughs> I think about 15 years ago or perhaps slightly more that um, there were one particular jellyfish that produced a protein. This is a big molecule that is made by the jellyfish itself which if you shine UV light on it produces um, a green colour. And because nobody at this stage knew what it was, it was given the rather unromantic name of GFP for green because of the colour fluorescent protein protein because the size of the kind of molecule that it was. And so the GFP was a slight oddity. And then in the 1990s it was discovered by doing genetic engineering that you could put the gene which made this GFP into bacteria. And much to my surprise at the Nobel announcement the guy who was talking about it, the professor who was explaining what it was for, um, produced a tube of the bacteria and shone a UV light on it and green light came out of it. Now that seems to be a really good piece of science communication, actually doing an experiment at this ceremony. And, but scientifically the importance of this was that if you can introduce this protein into all sorts of organisms, it doesn't actually have any biological function but it shows you where one of these cells is growing because if you shine light it starts UV light it starts giving out green light so that if you have some sort of bacteria and you want to know whether it's growing you just shine light and suddenly as the bacteria appear more and more green light comes out and it has been shown that you can put this into all sorts of organisms I believe, I'm not sure, they may even have put it into mammals so you can get green glowing mammals. Now for a number of reasons green light is not always very convenient for an experiment and the third person who won the, shared the Nobel Prize, uh, Professor Chen, is um, managed to, <coughs> to change these proteins so that you can get a whole range of different colours so you can 
now make bacteria that fluoresce blue or red or whatever according to the particular application you want. And the reason you might want to do this is because, for example, red light will go through human flesh and can come out, whereas other colours of light can't. But I believe that most chemists will be really excited that this prize has been given from this. And it is particularly good because it shows that chemistry really has an enormous importance, not just in chemistry itself, but in biology and in medicine, and that it's really a science that is central to the whole of <coughs> other scientific endeavour. Shouldn't the jellyfish have won the Nobel Prize? No, I don't think so, because the jellyfish hadn't really understood the importance of what it had done. And um, so one of the important or really key things in science is not just observing something, though of course the jellyfish may not realise it's fluorescing itself, but it's not just observing it, but seeing how that observation can be taken on to something that is useful.